What's up guys? Danny here from the Lasser Cast, and I just got out of Studio 666, the Foo Fighters horror film. Uh, this was like Evil Dead meets, it, at various points, School of Rock, uh, combined with many of the 80s rock and roll horror themed films. Uh, Joe Bob on the last drive-in on Shudder just played Black Roses uh, about like rock music that comes to a small town and you know it possesses all the kids and this movie fe feels very similar in tone to that uh, like you know Trick or Treat um, or or any of these rock and roll horror films that existed in the eighties. Let's talk about Dave Grohl for a second. This movie was based on his story. Uh, it was then written by two other people. It was directed by BJ McConnell, who directed a bunch of music videos for Slayer. But he does have one horror film on his resume, and it was Hatchet 3. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you Hatchet 3 was a great movie, but Hatchet 3 had some amazing gore, like the entire Hatchet series does. And... This movie is loaded with some absolutely insane gore. Uh, I'll give you one. Uh, in recent days, uh, in recent weeks, the horror community has been obsessing over Netflix's new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I did a video about it for this channel. And it's really like torn the horror community apart. You have gatekeeping on both sides. You have the people who didn't like the movie, who are saying, oh my God, another shitty Texas Chainsaw film. It, you know, if you like this movie, you suck. And then you have a large group on the other side who are like, if you don't like this movie, uh, what the hell's wrong with you? What do you expect from the horror genre? And the thing that bothers me the most about this whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre debate is that that movie was dumped on Netflix. So you can watch it and you're not really supporting the horror community. You're watching a requel, sequel, remake, whatever you want to call it. You're watching another franchise horror film. Meanwhile, in the last three weeks, I've gone to the movie theater and I've paid to see two brand new original horror films, The Cursed and now Studio 666. I was alone in this movie theater. It was just me. Now, granted, I saw a 1015 show on a Wednesday night of the Foo Fighters horror movie. I didn't expect a big crowd. I also didn't expect to be the only person there. I, I was actually talking with friends of mine, uh, Chris, uh, formerly of the Last Cash Channel uh, of Future Boy Reviews, and Brian Corson, who uh, does a lot of stuff with Pete on Comic Books Transformed. Uh, we were talking about how this movie wasn't really marketed, Studio 666. I got targeted ads for this on social media as a horror fan, as a Foo Fighters fan, but uh, didn't really see a lot of marketing for this uh, on TV. Uh, I didn't see any previews for this in, in other horror films that I've seen. You know what trailer I did see today? Fucking Morbius. Like, that movie, I swear... That movie came out before the first X-Men movie 20 years ago at this point. But this movie was not marketed. And it got put out on thousands of movie screens across the country. And it's not making any money. And at the end of the year, we're gonna get people are gonna be talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Scream. But they're not gonna be talking about this movie. They're not gonna be talking about The Cursed. They should be. That movie will make top 10 lists. And if you want to be a horror fan, I guess the end of this little rant that I'm going on is, to me, you you do not have to love every horror movie. You absolutely do not. 
you're allowed to have opinions. You're allowed to be a critical person. You're allowed to say, holy shit, that movie sucks. But as a horror fan, we should want to support these movies. We should want to go to the movie theater and be that one person in there to support the Foo Fighters demonic Evil Dead style slasher movie. We should want to go... We should be we should be hunting through Fangoria and horror Twitter and horror uh, social media pages, and we should be like, holy shit! There's a new werewolf movie in 2022. I've already seen Scream in theaters. I've already sat and watched that shitty Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Netflix. I'm gonna go and pay for a ticket to see The Cursed. Because it's a new horror movie and I want it to succeed. Even if I don't like it, if I don't like it, I'll fucking tell you I don't like it. But I want to go and support these movies. Did I like Studio 666? I didn't even talk about that yet. I'm six minutes into this video. Did I like Studio 666? Short answer, yeah. It was a whole lot of fucking fun. Do I have a lot of problems with it? Yeah. You know what? It was so goddamn long. And I say that because this movie was an hour and 50 minutes. It is 12.25 at night on a Wednesday. Uh, Thursday morning now. Uh, I'm going to see the Batman later tomorrow, tonight. And that's a three-hour movie. This was a, an Evil Dead-style slasher comedy uh, starring the Foo Fighters. This movie did not need to be an hour and 50 minutes. This movie was... This movie had about 90 great minutes of fun. And the last 15 to 20 minutes, it felt really long. The, the, the last 10 minutes of this movie did not need to be in the movie at all. That said, it's a ton of fun. There's great music in there. Of course there is. There's a great John Carpenter and Friends score. Uh, uh, opening credits uh, score. And John Carpenter even has a little cameo in the movie. Which is crazy because I wore this to the theater completely not knowing that. I wore a John Carpenter's Halloween t-shirt with my John Carpenter's Halloween sweatshirt. And he had a fucking cameo in the movie. Small fucking world. Um... Yeah, overall, this movie was a lot of fun. It has some amazing kills. It has the best chainsaw uh, best chainsaw moment of 2022, and they just put a Texas Chainsaw movie on Netflix. So take that shitty new Leatherface, because Dave Grohl's Foo Fighters Evil Dead style horror film just topped your movie with a chainsaw scene uh in the middle of the movie i like gleefully screamed out i kept looking around to make sure i was the only person in the theater and there were a few moments where i was hysterically laughing there were a few moments where i was like giddy from the gore and the violence that i was seeing and yeah uh at the end of the day is this a great horror film no is this gonna make my top 10 list at the end of the year I'm going to go with probably not. Uh, but when Fangoria's Chainsaw Awards come around, appropriately named, uh, the Chainsaw Awards uh, come around, they're going to they're gonna ask the question, what's the best kill of the year? I'm going to freaking enter some of the stuff that I saw in this movie. So, at the end of the day, Studio 666, give it about a three and a half out of five, uh, I thought it was a, a fun, silly, gory, good time at the movies. And go to the theater, buy your ticket. I know the movies are expensive. I know COVID is still a thing. But if you can, and if you can't, rent it on VOD. Like, support these original horror films. You can go in and pay for Halloween Kills and Scream and you know, any of these new projects, uh, you can sit and watch this fucking Texas Chainsaw movie and you can love it. I don't care. But 
if we're going to criticize and if we're going to call each other out for what kind of horror fan that we are, be the type of horror fan that supports new and original horror by buying tickets for it. And that that's really, at the end of the day, that's what I think matters the most because that's how you get more original horror. You know, you get more original horror when movies like this don't only sell one fucking ticket. Uh, movies like The Cursed, which was great, by the way. I saw it in a theater where there were four other people. It was two couples and me. Go see horror. Go see original horror. Go see non-original horror. But support movies like this. They're worth it. Uh, that's it. Have a great night. See you in the morning. <laughs> Danny from the Lasercast. Go see Studio 666.